had a cardiac arrest this morning, start CPR and do CPR and you have every hope that we can bring a person back and you don't. Uh, so forget it, you tuck it away and close it off and try not to think about it anymore. Because if you do, it'll wreck you. <laughs> like Shap are rare mm -hmm. uh, in that he is all heart all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing, it's a great quality. Uh, he used to be on our ship with us, which was awesome because he was a he was a really good person for when you had that that person that needed talking to or talking with. Mm -hmm. uh, empathy. He's real good about empathy. A lot of us just tune it out, turn it off. The problem is when we go home, it stays on, and that's where it can get us, is because we take that mentality home to our families, mm -hmm. and that's where it gets rough. Uh, about two years. Two years. How long you been recovered all life? About two years. Um, I worked at Target. You worked at Target. I did. For about eleven years. But, but were you back in? Were you in California? Then? No, I was here. And once I left California, I didn't look back. I got here as fast as I could. Why did you leave California? I joined the Marine Corps. Why did you work at Target? Um, I needed a job. What did you do at Target? I did loss prevention, and then I was a manager. What's loss prevention? Uh, we catch thieves, shoplifters. Then we have to take what's called uh, crisis intervention training. It is designed for people with that are in a mental crisis or having a crisis, whether it's substance abuse or mental illness or whatever. Uh, we go through a training course that's about a week long. Um, you get certified on it, you signed off, your little cool pin. Um, but we are trained on how to deal with, similar to today, um, emotional outbursts from mentally ill patients or people that have diagnoses um, or people that are under the influence. And so it's a good training. I, I recommend it to anybody that does this job. Um, because it can help, definitely help you to verbally de-escalate situations if you know what you're dealing with. So whether that's like today someone has severe autism or you have somebody that's under the influence of alcohol or drugs or you have somebody who's having a psychotic break. Um, some people don't take their medication the way they're supposed to and it causes a reaction. Um, and usually crisis officers get brought in to de-escalate the situation verbally so that you don't have to put hands on it also trains us that, again, like I was saying earlier, not everybody needs to go to jail. Some people just need some help, whether that's at the hospital or at a mental health facility. Um, so our judgment comes into play there when we decide we want to take somebody to one of those locations instead of transporting them to jail. I enjoy helping people a lot. Uh, one of the things that people say that I'm good at, I just, I, just, I guess, do naturally, uh, are crisis situations, talking to people. Uh, and helping, helping them come down to a more normal level and then getting them the help that they need. Someone did get my login at the PD somehow, or I left it logged in, which I don't think I did that. I think somebody got a hold of my login. Um, and changed the background of my screen at the PD, which then somebody walked by and saw it later on. And it happened to be a picture of a dog going to the bathroom. So I logged in and had people over my shoulder doing something when I logged in and up popped a dog taking a duty in the yard. He told me that he had to go to the bathroom and I said, well, just hang tight, we'll get you to the jail and you'll be able to go. Well, when we got to the jail, uh, escorted him in and he was standing there facing the wall. Um, they hadn't taken the cuffs off of him yet. Um, he informed them that he had to go to the bathroom. They told me he'll wait just a minute that they had to finish getting him unhandcuffed, get him in, you know, get him past the booking process. Um, so as soon as they unhandcuffed him, they stepped away, told him to put his hands on the wall, and they stepped away from him, set the handcuffs down, and he went ahead and uh, urinated all over the floor and the walls in the booking area. 